My name's Josh Lloyd. I work for Britannia Road Productions as the Head of Engineering. So my job involves designing audio for shows and tour support. So Britannia Road Productions is a premium rental company. We provide audio for um, touring bands and large events, both in the UK, around Europe and globally. We're part of a larger company called Claire Global. Our clients include people like Harry Styles, the Foo Fighters, the Brit Awards, MTV EMAs, obviously the Eurovision, uh, 2023 we were involved with. Eurovision, as I'm sure many people are aware, is one of the largest televised music events. In terms of audio crew, we had around 20 people working on the show just for the live side of the audio. We were on site for around seven weeks, uh, installing the system and then rehearsing and delivering a week's worth of shows. So it's a very, very large project. For the Eurovision project in 2023, Direct Out um, played a really large part in delivery of that project. So the kind of core of the system, um, the main kind of backbone was based around the Prodigy MP processors. One of the big briefs for the Eurovision was resilience and redundancy, so we couldn't afford to have anything um, fail during the show. The reason we had four Prodigies was we had two that were specifically handling all the playback and radio mics. So we would take all the playback systems in via Maddie and all the radio mics in via Dante. We were also handling all the audience mics in the arena for broadcast. So they would also use the mic cards inside the Prodigy and take all those in. So in terms of IO, the Prodigy was kind of utilizing all that it has on board. We were using the ear switching to switch between free playback systems. We had a main, a backup, and a disaster recovery. We had uh, multiple radio mics. We had um, 64 channels of radios hitting the Prodigy itself. So we were delivering Dante to some consoles. We were delivering Maddie to broadcast and to other consoles within the arena. And the reason for two Prodigies was we had a backup um, Prodigy. So we had some switching systems involving the M1K2 processors from Direct Out, which allowed us to seamlessly switch within one sample if we had the failure of a processor. We then had a second pair of Prodigy MPs, which were handling all the signal distribution to the loudspeaker system in the arena. We could take Maddie in from uh, one set of consoles. We were taking in uh, Dante from another console. We were also taking in analog backup from the consoles and utilizing the uh, input manager. It enabled us to have seamless switch over if we were to have a console failure or a failure in a piece of hardware in the signal chain. Um, so it kind of gave us that resilience which is really important on a project like that because with such a large televised audience, you want to ensure if there is a problem that they're not aware of it. And um, the switching capabilities of both the Prodigy and M1K2 enabled us to achieve that. We also used the Andy Armo for some of our conversions. So we were taking in things like Soundfield microphones that were providing audience mic in surround format, which also fed into the M1 K2 and the Prodigy system, signal distribution system, and also gave us some high-end conversion for some of the analog redundancy into the consoles. We also had the Xbox MD providing some format conversion between Dante and Maddie as well. And the great things with these, with using these products was also being able to monitor everything on them from um, Globcom. Another part of the direct out ecosystem that was incredibly helpful on Eurovision was Globcom, which is the control platform. The audio system for Eurovision was um, built kind of around a fiber backbone utilizing a converged network with multiple formats. One of the nice features with Globcon is the ability to have things like web browsers that link directly into endpoints such as network switches or other audio hardware which can be accessed via a web browser. We had an audio operator on, on site who, who uh, kind of was solely tasked with monitoring everything on the backbone of the system. So he had the ability to monitor everything from uh, kind of one dashboard over multiple monitors and being able to also customize views of um, Globcon. So if they wanted to kind of delve deeper into a specific kind of uh, area in a prodigy, maybe 
particular routing page, you can customize layouts within Globcon. So from an end user point of view, Globcon kind of enabled very fast navigation around a complex audio system, which is really important on a show like that, where people are requesting changes during the rehearsal period and potentially you need to delve into why someone might not be getting a signal or something like that during the build phase. The Ferrofish A32 is really useful because it has dual power supplies. Um, when using MADI, you have the ability to swap between uh, or auto switch between optical and BNC MADI. So on a project like this where resilience is important, although it's a uh, backup audio source, we can also have uh, two MADI sources running to the A32 and it will seamlessly switch over when there's a loss of clock. Um, it has dual power supplies, which enable us to run a UPS on one of the power supplies as well as hard power, which is really important, having that power redundancy. And also they support Dante as well. And there's a huge amount of routing options in the inside the processor. So it's just a, a really useful bit of conversion and uh, processing tool. On Eurovision and both at Brit Row, we use a lot of RME. Um, the reason for choosing RME products is they are incredibly robust and reliable and provide really good audio quality. On a show like Eurovision, it's obviously vocal to track. The delegates get to deliver their tracks ahead of time and that's um, put onto a Pro Tool system that provides playback via the RME Maddy Face XTs. So the entire playback system was based around free Maddy Face XTs and we had a fourth one for a rehearsal system. As well as the playback, the Maddie Faces also provide uh, time code outs. The whole show is driven by time code, which is really important. Not only audio uses time code, but also video, lighting, screens. So we distribute time code over our um, audio network, and that time code's responsible for a lot of the lighting looks during the show, a lot of the video graphics, um, a lot of the automation of pieces of set, um, there's moving elements in the lighting rig. Um, so as you can imagine, time code and the reliability of that is a really important part of the show. So um, the playback system and also the switching of that using the prodigies is, is really important to the um, kind of smooth delivery of the show. Uh, one of the really good things with the Maddie Face XT is being able to duplicate uh, across multiple outputs. So we actually duplicated a 64 channel MADI stream across the three sockets, which has enabled us to have three discrete outputs feeding each Prodigy and also our Xbox BLDS. So there was nothing in the middle, uh, and kind of another piece of hardware providing a split, which would be another point of failure. So it removed the need for adding an additional piece of hardware. We also use the RME 1610. So the audio system we were using from L Acoustics is based around AVB. And the great thing with 1610 is it gives us conversion from MADI to AVB. And that was the main backbone providing the AVB onto our AVB network to drive all the amplifiers around the arena. One of the great things with RME is the long-term support. RME are one of the few products that when there's a new Apple operating system, they always have drivers available straight away. They're always the first to the table with, with drivers. They also have such long support for their, for their products. So personally, I own Maddy Face XT along with various Maddy routers and Maddy bridges. Um, on a show like this, another reason to use them is, is that reliability of their drivers and robustness and the fact you very rarely hear of a piece of RME hardware going wrong.